Hello, everybody. The, welcome to part two of the uh, insect uh, or entomology part of the, of the peanut program. And um, once again, my name is Ayanava Majumdar, Dr. A. And I'm going to just quickly talk about insect management and what we're, we're seeing out there. Um, just wanted to remind everybody about some of the publications that are very useful, uh, especially that now we are not doing face-to-face um, -face meetings, um, but these are digital publications. One of those is the uh, peanut IPM or the caterpillar publication. Um, this is ANR2396. So you can look up ANR2396 on aces.edu and download this. This is actually like a card, but it has the caterpillars uh, nicely uh, uh, with pictures on there and a little description at the bottom. And on the other side are the leaf hoppers and some of the other sucking insect pests mentioned, including burrow bugs. That has been a problem. Um, uh, in peanuts. And uh, so right now we're going to focus on the caterpillar issues because I believe that's what you're going to see a lot uh, in the plots uh, or in, in, your, in your fields right now. The other thing I wanted to quickly mention is the IPM guide. Um, this is the peanut IPM guide. This is a print copy. Uh, but on here you will find information about different insects. Uh, we have also added snails in here because there is an issue with snails, especially when we have very wet weather. Um, then we get into snail problems, especially towards the harvest season. So we have some recommendations here that you can read about. I've also added a list of insecticides. Uh, it's like a big laundry list of insecticides. A lot of the new ones are, are added to the bottom uh, of this, this big list. So um, I was going to look up one of the insects. We, we were looking at the caterpillars, and I just turned over to the velvet bean caterpillar section because it has a a uh, lot of insects has listed. You can look up some of the other insects like army worms and you can find a lot of the insects. Uh, the bird worms are the ones that are difficult to control. But most of these others are fairly easy to control and I'm going to very quickly show you how to make a decision on, on the spraying. So say if, for example, um, if you look at, if, you, if you're scouting pretty regularly, um, so this is how your, your graph would look like. So say you are scouting for caterpillars and Typically, the graph looks like this. It may be a little hard to see on the phone, but this is a black line, this is a blue line. So this is the caterpillar. Here's the caterpillar line. So typically you have a kind of a bell-shaped curve. And then um, when you, typically what happens is if you mess up on the caterpillar control, you get into a, a big spider mite risk. So I'm gonna mark that. So uh, this is an area where you have the caterpillars very high, but you also are at a very high risk of spider mites. So here's your spider mite. So this is your spider mite, spider mite risk zone. And this typically happens around this time, in, in, uh, starting in July, August, September. And then here's your October when you might be getting ready to harvest the peanuts. But typically that's what we see is when we mess up on our caterpillar control, you get spider mites. So if you are seeing a trend, for example, over the weeks, you, you had um, insects go up from say, from uh, one to say four caterpillars per foot of row or four plus, you're probably worried about your peanuts. So at that point, we have a lot of good insecticide choices that you can, you can use, especially when you are entering this risk area. And I have some of these listed on these little post-it notes. What I like to do in our research plots here, and we have evaluated these, is um, use some of these insect growth regulators. So when you get into a situation where you are in a high risk area, uh, you're in a very high risk zone, you can use some of these insect growth regulators like diamond, dimelin, uh, intrepid and intrepid edge. Intrepid edge is a premix insecticide. Now these are specific to caterpillars and some other insects, but they do a great job with controlling these caterpillars without flaring up or risking the spider mites. So these are g great products to, to use, especially if you are using a lot of synthetic pyrethroids. Say for example, you started out with a pyrethroid, but because it's so hot and dry, if you use pyrethroids, they will flare up the mites you can switch to something like the insect growth regulators. And then when you're when you when you done towards the end of the season, you can go back to pyrethroids. 
that's not a problem. But, but during this risk zone, we have to be really careful and look, look at these other products. Um, another product that is um, pretty good is Radiant. And Radiant has a peanut label. It's a very popular insecticide for vegetables. So Radiant is by itself an insecticide, a spinosad insecticide. It's also an intrepid edge. So it's a premix insecticide as well. So these two are pretty good for overall for reduced risk caterpillar control. You can continue to use synthetic pyrethroids a bit late. Or you can also use, if you use pyrethroids earlier in the season, you can also use something like Besiege. Um, now, with, with a lot of these premixes, like Besiege, they have uh, pyrethroid mixed in there. So you get a pretty broad spectrum of insect control. And I like to use some of these premixes towards the later part of the season when I need a broad spectrum control against sucking insect pests, caterpillars. So that's what I, I would do is some of these premixes they're, and they also justify the cost towards the end when you really need to protect your, your peanuts. So, so here are some ways we are, uh, my recommendation of how to choose insecticides, um, especially with these insect growth regulators. And again, um, I'm not answering all questions here, but please feel free to call me. Uh, my, num my phone number is 251-331-8416. My email is bugdoctor at auburn.edu. Also, I've been posting uh, Facebook Live videos, 10-minute videos, scouting videos on Alabama Peanut IPM. And again, I th I'm very thankful to Alabama Peanut Producer Association and the National Peanut Board for providing funding to, for us to do these videos and do the demonstration plots to reach out to farmers virtually. Thank you. Goodbye.